see. And the reason this teaching is important, I believe, uh, and, and I'm intending to use this teaching to build confidence in the saints. Amen. The saints should be confident in this day and time that we're living in. These are perilous times, and your confidence level needs to be way up there. You don't, you don't need to be down here. Your confidence level needs to be way up there. Confidence as to who we are as born-again Christians. We need, to, we need to know who we are as born-again Christians. And, and, and we need to understand how the nature of God, the very nature of God, is created in our born-again inner spirit. The very nature of God, that's, that's how we're connected to God. We're connected to God not by a phone line, not by the internet. We're connected to God because of His nature being in us, Christ in us. The hope of glory. Christ in you. Amen. The hope of glory. We have this treasure in early vessels so that the excellency of the power will be of God and not of ourselves. Amen. Oh, that's a good, that's good word right there. That's, Amen. That should stir you up. Yes. So here's my text. 1 Peter 1 and 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. Again, the power of the incorruptible seed. In the book of Genesis chapter 8 verse 22, God said that as long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest, and it will never cease. Seed time and harvest will Never see. So since creation, since creation, all life has continued to produce after its own kind because of the seed principle. Every seed is bringing forth after its own kind. That's the case with plants. When you think about plants, Every seed, every plant seed brings forth after its own kind. When you talk about human beings, the same thing. And, and what we're going to understand today is that also applies to the incorruptible seed of the Word of God. In Genesis 1 and 11 it says that every seed yields its fruit after its own kind and whose seed is in itself. Every seed giveth fruit after its own kind, and whose seed is in itself. A seed is a complete set of precise instructions. Now, I know that many of you have held a seed in your hand at one time or another. Corn seed, wheat seed, bean seed. Uh, you know, we, we have corn on our plate sometimes when we're eating it. But we never, you know, it's, it's good food. And, but a lot of times while we're eating that whole kernel corn, uh, we're not thinking about what potential that corn had if it had been sown in the ground. We're not thinking about that, right? We, we're just thinking about trying to get a good vegetable, a good side vegetable, uh, you know, into our stomach so we can get that nourishment. That's what we're thinking about. But but that, that corn seed, when we look at when we look at that seed on its own, we don't see a whole lot. We don't see the full potential of what that seed is all about. But I, let me tell you what, what, what's contained in every seed that you would ever see, regardless of you know what kind of you know seed that you're talking about. Amen? A seed, any seed, all seed is a complete set of precise instructions packaged in a shell. And when properly sown, it will develop to the fulfillment of those instructions that's packaged in there. Now scientists call this DNA. You, you know about DNA. Yeah. Amen. You can, you can use DNA to identify uh, you know 
who was there, who committed that crime, who was on the scene. Because DNA is distinct and unique. Everybody has their own set of DNA. But that's what science calls it, DNA. And DNA is stored in the seed containing genetic instructions used in the development and the functioning of all living organisms. You see? So that's why if you sow a corn seed in the ground, that corn seed is going to grow up to be a stalk. And that stalk is going to look like the very corn stalk that that seed came from. Can you follow that? No, that, 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 that ain't too deep, is it? Oh, no. Amen. You, like, you get, you got a stalk of corn, and that, that stalk's got ears of corn on it, and those ears got seeds in those uh, corn husk or ear of corn. Ear of corn. Y'all don't know nothing about that, do you? Ear of corn. You know what an ear of corn is? And it's got all those lined up <laughs> corn seeds on it. You take one of those seeds off that ear of corn, which is on that stalk, you plant it in the ground, and it's going to grow up to a stalk just like the one that it came off of. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah! <laughs> so, 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 if you take a human seed, you see, a human seed, when, 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 a, when a woman becomes pregnant, by the seed of a man, then what happens is there was already contained in that seed all of the instructions as to what that baby is supposed to look like. That's why when a woman gets pregnant, she don't have to worry about producing a dog. Amen. <laughs> she knows it's going to be a human being. Because the constructions for how that baby will look was already in the seed that was planted into her. Amen. Okay? You, you got that. You know what I'm talking about. And, and moreover, moreover, that seed will cause that child to look just like the dad. Somewhat like the mother too, but mostly like the dad. Because the daddy is the dominant gene. Is that right? You understand where I'm coming from? Now we're not talking about having babies here. What we want to talk about is, is give you an illustration of how that same principle applies to the spiritual seed, the incorruptible seed of the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Just like the DNA instruction stored in a plant seed copies the attributes of that plant that it came from to the plant that springs up. You with me? The DNA instructions uh, from a human seed copies the attributes of the human it came from into the newborn baby. Are you with me? So it is with the spiritual seed. The DNA instructions stored in the incorruptible spiritual seed of the Word of God copies the attributes of Christ who is the source of the seed, Amen. into the born again new creature. That's why every man being Christ, he's a new creature. Amen. All things pass away. Behold, all things Amen. become new. Amen. And that applies to anybody that's Amen. been born again yes. of the incorruptible seed of the word of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's why we have a treasure in these earthen vessels. Because the, the reason it's a treasure is because what's inside of us now is Christ in you. How did Christ get in you? Through the incorruptible seed of the word of God that you were born again of. That seed copied Christ. I say it copied Christ. And in every detail it copied Christ. And repasted it in your inner soul. you have a treasure in these earthen vessels. That's why the excellency of the power is of God and not of us. Because of what we have. Amen. See, it's important to understand what we have as a part of the common process 
of salvation. Sometimes we don't totally understand salvation. We just think salvation is somebody that came up to the altar and went through the sinner's prayer. But salvation is a real thing. Yes, amen. Something happened, songwriter said. Something happened, and now I know. He touched me and made me whole. So, so, so when you're born again, when you're born again, then that process takes place in your life. And you already have a, you, you know, you don't have to sit around and worry about how am I going to live this life and how am I going to continue. It, it's a process that, that's not done by you. It's a process that's done by God. It's in the seed. It's in the seed. The seed already has packaged in it what you need to become a full, mature child of God. Amen. Amen. So now the word, the word of God, you notice in the scripture, the word of God refers to itself as a seed on many occasions. In Luke chapter 8 verse 11 is one instance where Jesus was talking about the parable of the sower and he says now the parable is this, the seed is the word. Right? I just want to go ahead and establish that. Yes. The seed is the word. There are 44 scriptures, at least 44 scriptures in the New Testament where the Greek word sperma was translated seed. Seed comes from the Greek word sperma. Now you ought to be able to use your intelligence to understand that. This is the same word from which we derive our English word sperm. We grown folks. Yes. Amen. You know what I'm talking yes. about. You know what I'm saying here, right? Amen. So the instructions for our growth and development and our functionality as a child of God. Because we don't just become born again to sit around. But there's some functionality that's also in that seed. Gifts, talents, abilities that are also in that seed. And they're copied over to our inner man. Amen? Praise the Lord, just like, just like, you know, when a baby is born, you know, they look at him and say, he's got his father's eyes, uh, he, he looked like his daddy, he, he got hair like his daddy, no, no, he got his father's eyes, but his hair must come from his mother, because that hair a little bit curly, so that must come from his mother, because she had all those perms when she was, okay. oh, I was just, you know. But, but that, you know how that works. And it, and it works, it works so good that sometimes a baby is born and, and, and people start whispering, that, that ain't his baby. <laughs> <laughs> Mama's baby, daddy's baby. <laughs> you know, it, it worked, DNA works so, it works so, it worked so excellent that sometimes folks start whispering. Say he, that baby don't look nothing like that man. <laughs> you know, and they'll, and they'll put their foot down on it because they know that DNA don't lie. Amen. You know, and then when they go get the DNA test, you know, you're you going to know now who's who. You see what I'm saying? And what I want you to understand today, that the test, the results of the test is in. And if you've been born again, not a corruptible seed, but an incorruptible seed, the results are in. You are a child of God. You got his DNA. DNA, we can, we can say the spiritual DNA, we can say that stands for divine nature and attributes. So you got God's DNA, you got his divine nature and attributes. They have been copied over to you. They have been blueprinted in you. Amen. They have been blueprinted in you when you were born again of the incorruptible seed of the word of God. Amen. And so now that they've been copied in, in you, uh, then now you, you already can see what you're going to develop into. Somebody said, how can you see what you're going to develop into? When the child is small, you don't know what they're going to develop into. But look at daddy. Just look at the daddy. Look at 
a daddy, and you know what this child is going to be developed into. Now that's that's in the natural. When it comes to the spiritual, the, in, the spiritual incorruptible seed of the Word of God, you want to know what Christians are going to look like? Look at Christ. Look at Christ. Because the very nature of Christ is copied through that incorruptible seed into our inner spirit. You notice, one of the things that you'll notice, you can look back and notice that born again folk see the word of God in a different light Amen. than what folk that not that's not been born again. Mm -hmm. Amen. I mean, you can even look at your own personal life before you got saved. Amen. You didn't read your Bible. <laughs> you might have tried. You might have looked in the Bible. <laughs> I never forget, I used to do prison ministry and I used to always encourage the guys, look, once you get out of prison, I don't, you've been coming to all the services that I bring to the prison camp. When you get out, don't stop. You know, I had one brother get out and, and send me a notice, uh, tell pastor, I peeped at the Bible. No, don't be peeping. Don't be peeping. You, you're just calling on yourself. You peeped at the Bible. <laughs> you just, you just told it on yourself. You see, but when you, look at the, when you look at the Bible, you can see exactly what we're supposed to look like as Christians. Yes. You can see that. Okay. And, and we see the Word of God in a different light because when it's in you, there's a connection. Amen. Amen. When it's not in you, there's no connection. Amen. So you can read the whole Bible. You hear people talk about that. Read the whole Bible. You hear people talk about they go to seminary. They go to, go to a Bible school and if you're not born again, Bible school does you no good. Amen. If you don't have Christ in you, your study in the Word does you no good. Jesus. Amen. 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 Remember the Ethiopian man where a Philip, you know, was translated to? He said, I'm reading it, but who is this? He was reading uh, Isaiah 53. Uh, uh, who, who, who is this scripture talking about? Is he talking about? Himself or was he talking about somebody else? He just didn't get it. And so Philip had to uh, pronunciate and, and explain and, and you know and break it down to him because Philip was born again. Amen. But this man, although he was very educated, had no idea. Jesus told Nicodemus, uh, you, you, <laughs> you're a ruler in Israel. And you don't understand the things of God. Amen. How do you go teach them and you don't understand yourself? He didn't even know what it meant to be born again. How can a man be born again when he's already old? But when Christ is copied over into your inner spirit by the seed, the incorruptible seed of the word of God, now when you read the Bible, you're reading what's already in you. That's the difference. I remember when I used to try to read the Bible. I used to try to read the Bible every time I would get sick. I'm talking when I was a sinner. When I would get sick, you know, when I would try to read the Bible, hoping to get some comfort. You see, when I would get scared, I would try to read the Bible. When I knew I was in trouble, you know, in jail. <laughs> oh, boy, I loved the Bible when I was in jail. Because I was trying to get some comfort, you know, get, get a way of escape. But it meant nothing to me. It did nothing for me. Because I had nothing on the inside to bear witness to what I was reading. But when I got saved, when I became born again, I read the Bible as a whole. It's the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ shines in my heart. That scripture says the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the image of God, shine in their hearts. You see? So it's a big difference once you become born again and now you read the word of God. It's a big difference. Shame, shame, shame. Some folk get born again and still won't stay. Okay. Alright. But you know it's true, right? And that's wrong. That's wrong. You're born again now and you, you are in a position to receive from God. You're in a position to know the deep things of God. Because the spirit that's in you that's been copied from Christ searches all things and searches the deep things of God. Amen. Man, you should plant your face in that Bible and read, 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 meditate, meditate, meditate. Listen, 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 study, study, study. Because there's a richness that's in the word of God. A richness to you because you've been born again of that incorruptible.
covered up with a seal. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know a seed will stop growing if it's not nourished. Amen. Jesus. So when once you're born again, in order for you to reach that fulfillment, in order for you to go all the way and develop into what you're supposed to be, you have to, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Now, now, mothers, y'all know what I mean when I say desire it like a newborn babe. Us men don't know nothing about that, but mothers know that when you desire something like a newborn baby, that means around the clock. Amen. You know, when you bring a baby into the world, you can't put that baby in the crib at 6 o'clock in the evening and think you're going to be okay until the next morning. Amen. Mothers know it ain't going to happen like that. It ain't going down like that. Amen. Every three to four hours, that baby is hungry again. Yeah. And some babies, it don't take three or four hours. Some babies are just way off schedule. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Some babies were just way off schedule and you just had to be ready. Whenever a baby called, you had to come running. Amen. Amen? Amen? Well, that's the, way it's supposed, that's the way we're supposed to desire the Word of God if you really want to grow into what Christ has, has already patterned you to grow into, has already presented the blueprint for you to grow into. If you really want to grow, then you've got to, you've got to be nourished around the clock. Nourished around the clock. Amen. You just can't hit it and quit. Amen. You just can't, you know, a well, pastor will feed us on Sunday. You know what? You don't go to go to the corral on Sunday and then you don't come on to the next Sunday. You do that, you don't. No. Know, if on next Sunday come, you don't hit four or five more buffets. Cause, cause when it comes to the natural food, we don't need it. We don't need no coaching. Amen. We don't need no inspiration when it comes to the natural food. Amen. We got some folk, boy, they, they whole life is based on the snacks that they got in the kitchen. They, the inventory of snacks that they got in the kitchen is what makes life great for them. Amen. So you need to be snacking on some scripture. Studying to show yourself approved unto God so that you can grow up into what God has already programmed you to be. Amen. Amen. You know, a seed, is, a seed is like some of the apps that you have on your phone. Those apps come with a set of instructions uh, that, that are already programmed to control how that app will run, what results that that app will produce. Well, a seed is the same way. A seed already has all those instructions already in it. Before you were born again, those instructions are already in the, in the seed. So when you're born again of that seed, then the program becomes a part of you. Amen. God already has a program set in that seed for you. Amen. And if you will let it take its course, and if you will feed it, nourish it, so that it can grow into a maturity, uh, then you can be a great man, great woman of God. Uh, you know, I, you, it, it, will, it will get you there. Jesus. It will put you on the path. And it will get you there. Amen? Amen. But you got to, you got to continue to feed it. Yeah. And let me, let me close with this last scripture. Uh, a, a very familiar passage of scripture that I will read to you. And uh, I believe that through this teaching that we're, this discussion that we've had today, uh, I believe that this last scripture ought to bring more light to you now. You've read it before, but now it should be more clearer. Used to be a song in the world. I can see clearly now. Amen. And that's what I want to do. I want to see clearly the things of God, the ways of God, the word of God, the will of God. I want to be able to see it clearly. Not just for my life, but for the life of those around me, for my family, friends, those that I preach to, those that I teach, those that I witness to, seek to counsel. I want to be able to see things clearly. There are too many people that, that are confused. And when they preach to you, you get confused. Amen. Or if they try to counsel you, you're going to be confused. Amen. Amen. So I, I want to see clearly. Amen. So this scripture is going to bring some clarity. Or this discussion is going to bring some clarity to this scripture. 1 John 3 and 2. 
It says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Now, can you understand now how you've always known you were a son of God, right? But can you understand how now, can you now understand how you are a son of God? As a result, uh, trust the process. Look, that's why I said, trust the process. Don't high five it, don't touch it, just look at it. And say, trust the process. You see through the process how you have become a son of God. Because the seed of God has been sown. And new birth has come forth. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And watch this. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. Uh-huh. You see where this is going, right? Can't you, can't you see where this is going? You, you, can't you see where this is going? It does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. How many know that? We shall be like him because of the incorruptible seed that has been sown in our heart. We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Hallelujah. You know, we, we sometimes when we look at a newborn baby, we say he looks just like his daddy. No, he don't. You know, newborn babies, they don't look like what they're going to be. Not yet. You know, we try to project, or we try to use our imagination, and we try to project, you know, we might say, well, look at the nose, the nose kind of, you know, <laughs> look at the way the eyes are shaped, they look like, you know, they're going to be just like his daddy, uh, but, but until he start growing up, now, you, now that's when you start saying, oh, he spit you out, you look just like he spit you out, you your dad is spit you out. That's because he's developing into what he shall be. Amen. Which is just like his dad. Amen. And we're developing into what we shall be. And, and the difference between the incorruptible seed and the plant seeds and the human seeds or, or animal seeds, the difference is that the seed of plants and the seed of animals control more of the outward man, what the outward man is going to look like what the outward man is going to be like. Because you can be a real good daddy with great character, walking in the spirit, love, joy, peace, and you can have a son and he'll look like you, but that don't mean he's going to behave like you. Oh, yeah. Boy, I wish somebody knew what I was talking about every day because, because the, 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 natural, the natural genes and chromosomes and that natural DNA and that natural seed that control character. It just impacts the outward appearance. He's going to look like you. There's no guarantee that he's going to behave like you, but he's going to look like you. But the difference is with the incorruptible seed of the Word of God, it has nothing to do with the outward appearance. It's all about the inner character. It's all about the behavior of the person. So that's the difference in the incorruptible seed. Amen. You want a good person, then that person needs to be born again of the incorruptible seed of the word of God that lives in the body of heaven. You want a person of love, a person of joy, a person of peace, then that person needs to be born again. Amen. That's why Jesus said, and see this, this, this opens a light to a lot of scriptures. That's why Jesus said, none is good but God. Somebody came there and said, good master. And he would be, oh, none is good but God. You see? So even in the earth today, ain't nobody good except for them that have been born again of the incorruptible seed of God. Because what happens with that seed, the goodness of God is coming over into the inner man of those that are born again of the word of God. Hallelujah. Y'all don't love this like I love it. Y'all are excited as, as, as excited as I am about this is good to me. Now I know who I am. Now I know who I am. I really know. I really know who I am, what I'm supposed to be, and then how I'm supposed to act. I'm supposed to act just like my daddy. Amen. And I know who my daddy is. Amen. I know who I was born of. I'm not talking about the first birth. I'm talking about being born again. Not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed. By the word of God that liveth in the body forever. Amen. Ah, bless the Lord. Oh, my 
answer. Let us pray so we can all go home. Some of you, you're going to be thinking about this next week and it's going to hit you. You're going to get a revelation. Amen. You're going to get all excited. Amen. The excitement that you should have demonstrated today in this service. You know, it's going to hit you by Wednesday and you're going to be demonstrating all by yourself. That's what, that's what, that's what the pastor was saying. I, now I see, now I see. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Mm. But this is going to be on Facebook, on my Facebook page. So if it hits you Wednesday, then just go to Facebook and pull, it, pull up this video. And you can hear it all over again. You can have church all over again, this time with excitement. Amen. Amen. Because it may have went over your head, you know, during the service today. But, you know, when it hits you, you know, you can go right back and experience it on, on Facebook. Ah, oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, all that's within me, bless his holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. Bless your holy name. Thank you. Thank you for this word of truth. Thank you, Lord God, that you've chosen us. You've chosen us. It's such a precious thing to be chosen by you to be sons and daughters of God. The Spirit. Our inner spirit beareth witness that we are the children of God. Because we've been born again of that seed that copies the image of God right into our inner man. And we thank you for it. Because now our life is hid with Christ in God. The life that we now live, we live by faith in the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. Father, I pray that this congregation will embrace and receive what's been spoken from your word, and those that hear by social media will also embrace and receive what's been spoken through your word. Father, I pray for all of the sick and the infirm. Help us, Lord God Almighty, help us. Help us, have mercy upon us, and help us with our challenges, with, our, with the afflictions that we endure, that we suffer. Bring deliverance into our lives. For we are your children. And we have, we have been given the right to partake of your divine nature. We have been given the right to be recipients of life and godliness. Healing is the children's bread. Healing is what you provide for your children. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen.